Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Douche! Smile to Jannah. <laughs> a once jewel in the British Empire has now become a mere stain in modern times. More specifically, a pungent brown stain. That is cow dung and urine may cure the virus. The creativity of the stupid that emerges from this country just doesn't surprise me anymore. Be it naming your children after a deadly virus or delusions of grandeur. Simply, universe has no choice other than following me. Of course it goes without saying that not all Indians are the same, yeah? I've never made that claim. Ever since the BJP has come into power, Hindu nationalism has led to open hatred. Muslims do not deserve equal rights to apply for There's no such as equal rights, they're not in an equal category. Be it through the CAA bill, the lockdown in Kashmir, or even now, blaming all of the Muslims for the virus. There has been around the clock intensive media coverage hell bent on blaming and pinning the virus on Muslims. By hiding behind the guise and the name of the Bligi Jamaat, they seem to be attacking all of the Muslims. Because of the singular determination of the Tablighi Jamaat to spread the coronavirus in my country. But some blind, stupid, moronic Muslims are even joining in as well. Just because the Tablighis may not be from the same sect as them. Now this Uncle Tom looking fella doesn't even realize that Tablighi Jamaat has only started about a hundred years ago and he's talking about something that happened I don't know, 12, 13 hundred years ago. And regardless of all that, if a Muslim doesn't help another Muslim just because they are not from the same sect as them, then there is no one more lowly and pathetic than you mate. You hearing me yeah? And this hate will no doubt continue because the government knows it's failing to help its own people and if it can keep those very people distracted by hating Muslims, it gives them an easy pass. You've got a poor man who's scooping milk from the floor just so he can make ends meet. And here you've got families from Gujarat that have taken to the streets and are marching. But of course the media is too busy pinning things on the Muslims. And if that's not all, anti-Muslim announcements are being made in temples and gurudwaras. Yeah, you heard me, on the loudspeakers. And this is further intensifying the hate. And this is now leading to the livelihoods of the Muslims being boycotted. They had gone to a few villages to, in the district to sell vegetables and some people had even brought vegetables from them. But then some other people came and abused them and asked them to leave the village. Those who'd already uh, bought vegetables were also asked to return them and told not to buy any vegetables from Muslim vendors. And for some families that rely solely on this stuff, it's just becoming too much. Here is a case of a man who was accused of having the virus. He didn't, but when he came back, the intense pressure from the community and the boycott caused him to take his own life just so his family wouldn't have to suffer. Here is another instance where a Muslim tested positive and being aware and knowing what was to happen next, he opted to take his own life rather than facing everything that was about to happen. But look how the pitiful and pathetic Indian media reported this story. 30 year old Tablighi Jamaat member has committed suicide. He was a native of Assam who had uh, been a member of Tablighi Jamaat Merkaz. Diviesh, very sad story, uh, the Tablighi uh, Jamaat member has committed suicide. The term Tablighi Jamaat has become a slur. It doesn't warrant any sympathy. In fact, it dehumanizes the person. So calling him all this 
and not mentioning the fact that he was an Indian Muslim and suicide is the most abhorrent and shameful thing that society could have led him to. Ah, we're not going to mention all of that, we're just going to call him a tablighi and we're just going to be done with it. If this isn't modern day Nazism, I don't know what is. And of course on the other hand, you've got BJP leaders openly defying the lockdown and celebrating their birthdays. Uh, where BJP MLA Masala Jairam has held a lavish birthday gathering in the middle of a national lockdown where absolutely no social distancing norms were maintained. And on the other hand you've got Indians that are chopping the hands of their own police that are trying to help them but no it's the Muslims that are the problem and you know what if they're not evil enough just make up the news <laughs> yeah that's right make up the news and when the smoke settles just admit it was a mistake listen go on now let me un uh, make out make out you know make a one point absolutely clear to you what is this seriously but in and amongst all of this drama i want to celebrate someone called Muhammad Salim who despite knowing the hatred of the police when they asked for his identity he revealed himself to be Muhammad and watch the footage before the policeman was you know just having a casual conversation but when he revealed his name to be Muhammad watch <laughs> So wherever this youngster is, let him know, he is a legend. <laughs> Guys, what, what, what can we say, what can we do other than make dua for them? May Allah use this time that we have to help us understand the essence of our faith and help us become proactive, productive Muslims. Alright guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.